Norden Security in 2017. Let's check it out. You guys have been asking for this a lot, so here you have it. First things first, I'm just going to run their live update. I generally don't talk about things like pricing in my reviews, but I did notice that they have turned this product into a subscription-based service now, and I think the default prices on their website were a little bit steep, but I've seen them at lower prices. And for this test, we are using the Deluxe version. I really don't like the new version names. Irrelevant side note. Anyway, the updates are done, so let's get started with the test. I grabbed a few malware links. Let's see if Norton can fend them off. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, first one surprisingly loaded. I don't know if it did anything though. Honestly, that was quite odd, because when I tried it on my host machine, it actually asked me for a file download. I don't know why it just popped up with a text prompt. Hmm. This is odd indeed. The test on the host machine was on Chrome. Maybe that's why it was treated differently. But here's our next file coming up. Zzz.exe. Headphone users are just going to cry at me now. Can't help it, that's just the name. All right, player.exe, that's our next one. This one seems to have been taken care of. This one too, I believe. Yep. Honestly, I do know very well that 8 links isn't a very large sample size to properly test a modern security product. The only reason I do these things is to give you guys an idea of how the product interacts when a web-based threat is detected. Hover.exe didn't spend that much time hovering on this computer. A few more links to go and then we'll get to our files, which is the more interesting part, at least in my opinion. Norton is uh, doing a good job so far removing everything. Apart from that initial file, which I don't know what happened to it. But here's the last link, and then we'll move on. The rest of the story will have to be revealed by the second opinion scanners. So it seems like that's the end of that. Everything was taken care of. Norden says all is good, and I'll take its word for it at the moment. But before I can get our files in, I will have to disable auto-protect just for a few minutes. 15 should do just fine. Now let's go ahead and grab our files. As far as I'm concerned, this malware is about one to four days old. But of course I cannot give you a definite number on each and every one of these. We have 429 items, all collected recently. I'm going to do a right-click scan and let's see what Norton finds. In recent updates, Norton has been moving more of its signatures to the cloud, kind of lowering its detection ratio in between. I don't know if they've resolved that or um, if Norton is focusing more on on-execution protection. So this scan should tell us a lot. One thing I do notice about the Norton UI is that it is a little bit slow in many aspects. For example, the alerts are sometimes delayed. There's a certain latency between you clicking something and things popping up. I really don't know why that happens, considering this 2017 and most polished products have uh, almost 
rocket fast UIs. And I don't think it's a particularly hard thing to do, I just think there's some clunky implementation here. Okay, well this is hilarious. Norton was removing the threads it found, I think 394 in number, but in between this is what I get. So that does not speak very highly of the stability and QA quality of this product. Anyway, I'll try to see if we can get this process started again without everything breaking down. And now Auto Protect has turned on. So that could have been what triggered it. Auto Protect being turned on while the scan was active broke it, apparently. I mean, you'd expect better from a popular solution like this. So I'm just gonna have to disable Auto Protect for some more time. Okay, apparently that's grayed out now, because it's active. Wow, thank you so much, Norton. You're really, um, helping. And it's telling me that one file cannot be removed and I need to get help. Wow. A file that's just sitting on the desktop doing nothing. It's not even active. It hasn't even been run. I mean, I can just shift delete it, but Norton apparently can't do that. So many things happened so quickly in the last few minutes. <laughs> I'm kind of at a loss of words here. But obviously I'm not very happy with how Norton is acting. It's almost acting as an amateur beta product. You won't expect that from something that's been in the industry for over a decade. Anyway, no use whining about it, so I just restarted the scan and uh, we'll just wait and see what happens next. Alright, the scan and removal process is close to complete. We do have a few additional items which could not be removed and it won't let me do anything else to it. So the best I can do is uh, just close the UI and try scanning it again and hope that it removes a few other things because apparently that does happen with Norton sometimes. Having said that, we still have 256 items in the folder. So I'll just try this again, just to make sure we didn't miss anything. This process is quite painful, and unreasonably so, given that I do the exact same thing with a lot of other products, and Norton always seems to be one of those chosen few products that gives you a lot of trouble. Second scan, and we're still stuck with the same threats we can't seem to be able to get rid of them. It says it requires manual removal, which I guess means that I'm gonna have to contact their support, wait a long time, hope that they fix my issue, and then I can use my computer again. I can understand why this is the case, given the threat, Verloc. This is actually a patching virus and ransomware. So in a realistic case, it might be difficult to get rid of it automatically, but then again, I mean, this is just a file sitting on the drive, it's not even active. Why Norton can make that basic distinction is beyond me. And if they do want to recover the files, they could have had some kind of uh, disinfection process, but they don't. So, well, let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. Would you consider this a positive, that they're asking you to get help for a technical issue? Or do you see this as a negative, as their software cannot deal with it? I don't know. But this count is really small, so I guess we'll take the leftovers as the number for the detection ratio calculation. I just did the math, and it gives us a detection ratio of 40.3% which, if I were to compare with most other AV products of the time, would be considered dismal. But then again, maybe that's not how Norton operates. Maybe most of its uh, technologies work on execution, which is fine. I mean, I don't care how the threats are blocked as long as they are. So now we're going to go ahead and run these files, and hopefully Norton can protect us. As you can see, everything is turned on, and we are running default settings. Here goes nothing. Okay, it seems like Norton is blocking access to a lot of these. So auto protect can detect these, but not the scanner. It's 
So it's kind of confusing how the signatures in this product work. Apparently the cloud signatures or the secondary engine is not involved in the scan, but it works on access. I mean, you'd kind of expect the opposite, right? That the on-demand scan would be more thorough. But well, if it works, it works. Now it's going to be really difficult for me to isolate the files which actually may not be detected by the scanner. Did I say difficult? Wait, make that impossible. All I can do is hope that we run a few of those. So far, Norton is doing a really good job when it comes to preventing this stuff from executing. We haven't had anything run so far. At least that's what it looks like. Oh, this is a difficult test. So there you have it. Norton did actually do a pretty good job. Now just to be sure, I'm going to delete this folder and do a few second opinion scans and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Alright, our second opinion scanners do not seem to be picking up anything, so I guess that's a clean sheet for Norton. Having said that, I'm not exactly impressed by the way this product worked, but hey, it kept the system clean. And I guess that's what matters most. But given the lack of stability, I'm kind of concerned because you wouldn't want something like that happening while you're in the middle of a malware attack or something like that. But maybe this was just a one-off. Let me know your thoughts in the comments as I suggested earlier. This is all I have from here. One thing that's clear from this test is that Norton works mostly on execution and that's the direction they're headed which is interesting, and I hope you liked the video. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.